Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Do Some Fungi Turn Insects into Zombies? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal mBio, published on October 5, 2021. Research conducted by Teresa De Becker, William C. Beckerson, and Carolyn Elia from the Department of Biology at the University of Central Florida and the Department of Organismic and Evolutionary Biology at Harvard University. See more about the authors and their affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Did you know some fungi can turn insects into zombies, like in the movies? These fungi control what the insects do. They make them do strange things, like walking a lot, climbing tall plants, and hanging high up. They do this so that they can infect more insects. There are many types of these fungi, but they all change the insect's behavior in similar ways. But how do they do that? And why do they all seem to change the same behaviors? We looked into many studies about zombie-making fungi. We found out that each fungus has its own tricks to control the insects. We think the fungi change the same behaviors because these are the behaviors that help the fungi infect as many insects as possible. Introduction. Have you ever seen a zombie movie? They are a bit scary. In some stories, dead things come back to life. In other stories, a virus or something else changes people's behavior. They are not themselves anymore. Something similar happens in real life, although not to people. There are some fungi that can change insects' behavior. Like all living things, these fungi want to spread. Fungi spread with tiny cells called spores. They use tricks to control the insects so that they can spread these spores better. For example, one fungus infects flies, making them climb and stick to plants. The fungus grows and releases spores from up high to spread in the wind. There are many types of fungi that infect insects. Sometimes the infection kills the insect quickly, but other fungi have a special relationship with their host, the insect. They live together for a while, and the fungus changes the insect's behavior. These fungi wait until their host is in the right place before eventually killing the insect. We call these fungi zombie-making fungi. And guess what? There are even more of them than we thought. It's amazing that these fungi evolved independently. Each one has evolved alongside its host over millions of years. And each one has its own way of controlling insects. But all infected insects do similar things. We wanted to know how the fungi do this and why controlling insects is such a popular strategy for fungi. Here, the wasp is stuck to the leaf as the fungus grows from its body. The leaf is green and the wasp is on top of it facing to the left with one of its wings sticking up. Methods. We looked at what other scientists have learned about zombie-making fungi. We asked ourselves these questions. How do these fungi control the behavior of the insects? And why does this happen so often in nature? Here in figure one, you can see how the fungi turn insects into zombies. We'll go through in a counterclockwise direction, starting at the working ant in the nine o'clock position in the graphic. A working ant gets infected by spores, then they travel to the ant nest underground. The infected working ant then climbs upward and shows a behavior called biting that allows them to stick to branches or leaves. Then the fungal spores grow and transmit themselves, spreading the fungus to more working ants. Results. Zombie-making fungi have really cool ways of controlling insects. You can see some examples in figure two. All these changed behaviors help the fungi spread. So how do they manage to change the insect's behavior? 
Zombie making fungi have two main ways to do that. They physically change the insect's bodies. For example, they make the insect spread its wings so that they don't get in the way of the spores. This is quite a common change in behavior. Other changes are unique. For example, one fungus takes over some of the host insect's organs. They can also release some chemicals that make the insects feel funny. Like drugs, they affect their brain and make them do strange things. Here in figure two are some unusual things that the insects will do once they are infected. From top to bottom, we have increased movement. The host moves a lot to reach places that help the spores spread. Climbing, the higher the host, the easier it is for the spores to spread, especially if there is wind. Sticking to the surface. After climbing, the host sticks to the plant so that the spores will spread in the way the fungi want them to. Making more friends. Infected insects can infect others through direct contact. And splayed wings, so that the wings don't get in the way of spore dispersal. Looking at these behaviors, what do all the types of changed behaviors have in common? Discussion. The changed behavior is often the same in different insect hosts, but different fungi use different tricks to control insects. It's like they have their own special superpowers. Why do these behaviors happen so often? One reason is that these fungi are really good at finding the easiest behaviors to change in insects. Animals, including insects, change their behavior because of their changing surroundings. Zombie-making fungi take advantage of this. It's like they hack the insect's brain. Another reason behind the similar behaviors is that they do help the fungi spread. For example, high positions make it easier for the spores to spread further using the wind. Other behaviors help the fungi avoid the insect's protective systems. For example, ants live in colonies. When one ant is sick, the others can tell and get rid of it so that it doesn't affect anyone else. Zombie ants avoid this by wandering away from the colony. Zombie-making fungi can sometimes use the insect's immune system. When we get sick, our bodies release substances that change our behavior. For example, we often don't want to eat when we're sick. This way, our body preserves energy. It's the same with insects and zombie-making fungi love to use that against them. Conclusion. Zombie-making fungi are truly amazing. They have special ways to infect and control insects. It shows us how incredible nature is and how everything is connected. Our actions can affect other living things too. That's why it's important for us to make good choices that help the environment. We can reduce waste, save resources, and support efforts to protect animals and plants. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.